All right, so in this video, we are going to go over the D6 uh, Tanabe Sugano Tanabe Sugano diagram. And so we're going to want to use this diagram uh, for uh, D6 octahedral complexes or uh, D10 minus 6, so D4 tetrahedral complexes. And first, it's just useful to go over some of the axes, what the axes mean for um, these diagrams. And so on the left, we have energy. Energy is in units of B, the Rockout parameter, which is a measure of electron-electron repulsion. It's going to be different for different transition metal cations. You can see that this is unitless um, because we're going E divided by B. So it's E in units of B, or you can think about it as how many more times um, is the transition energy versus B, versus the rock out parameter. Um, and so if we're at an energy of zero, that's going to be the ground state. And energy of 40 is 40 B, um, 40 times more than B. Same idea with the units for delta. Delta is the gap between um, EG and T2G for uh, delta O for octahedral complexes, or it's delta T, the gap between um, T2 and E ligand set for TD, um, so delta T. And if we're at zero um, on the x-axis, that is when we have no ligands. We're uh, in the free ions. We're in spherical symmetry. Um, and so we have these different sort of atomic term symbols with different uh, letters because we don't have a molecule. Then we go to, uh, you can see a, a quintet T2 ground state when we start having uh, some sort of ligand, when delta is greater than zero. And then when we get relatively high ligands, we go to a different spin state, low spin. Our ground state changes to a singlet, A1. Um, and our ligand gap has become big enough now that we favor low spin. Um, and this line here is the spin crossover point. So these Tanabe Sugana diagrams, the D4, the D5, the D6, and the D7, um, uh, where they have actually just D4, D5, D6, where they have different spin states um, and these spin crossover points, they can be uh, rather complicated. So uh, we're going to write just to label, uh, label things that the left side of this diagram is the high spin portion of the diagram. That's when we have weak field ligands, things like iodide and water, usually. Um, you can look up about the spectrochemical series. Uh, I have a video on that. And then on this side is the low spin side of the diagram, the right side of this line, and that's with strong field ligands. Okay, so um, let's talk about uh, on this slide, just the left side of the diagram, so the high spin case. So what we're going to be writing here uh, in the next few minutes is just going to be applicable to uh, the left side of the diagram. So that's what we're going to be using. So first, you have to figure out if your complex somehow is high spin or low spin, um, or maybe use this diagram to back that out, depending upon what information you have. But first thing I like to do is think about uh, this ground state and why it is a uh, quintet. Why is the spin multiplicity equal to five? Well, we know that for the um, octahedral ligand set, we have uh, three T2Gs um, that are lower in energy than the two EGs. And so if we're high spin and we have six electrons, we're gonna be populating at such one, two, three. And when we get to the fourth and fifth electron, we put them in the EG because there's a greater penalty. Delta O is relatively low. There's a greater penalty um, <clears throat> to electron pair. So we want to uh, avoid electron, uh, electron repulsion and we favor putting these in the EG. But our sixth electron has to go there. Um, we're forced to put it uh, in electron uh, pair. So we have uh, four unpaired electrons. Those are four spin-offs uh, for one halves that are unpaired. So four plus one halves, that's two. So we use our rule two S plus one and our S is equal to two. 
And so we get a spin multiplicity of five, which is telling us we have a quintet. So that matches. What about tetrahedral? Tetrahedral uh, is a little bit different, as you remember. Might remember, we have a delta T, um, but it's actually uh, flipped in the sense that now the E is on the bottom and the T2 is on the top. We drop the Gs because there's no garata. There's no inversion. Remember, garata just is a Mulliken symbol term. That means uh, symmetric with respect to inversion. So there's not that with TD. So we drop it. And again, we go high spin. So uh, one, two, the third, fourth, and fifth electron go in the TD. And then our last sixth electron goes in the E. And we're going to have one, two, three, four uh, unpaired electrons. Again, S is going to be equal to 2. So our spin multiplicity, 2S plus 1, equals 5. So again, we're the same ground state. So it makes sense that we have a quintet T2. I think it's just good to know what those ground states are, and, you know, where these values come from. Um, and so our ground state uh, for octahedral, we then know, uh, just reading the diagram, is quintet T2, and we add a G, because octahedral has inversion. And our ground state, GS, for uh, tetrahedral is the same thing, but we don't use the G. Okay, so now we're looking for um, spin allowed transitions. So what are spin allowed transitions? Spin allowed transitions. Spin allowed transitions are those that are gonna be you know, relatively intense in energy. Um, and our spin selection rules tell us that we have to preserve spin. So if we have a quintet ground state and we're going to an excited state and an electron is going to be absorbed through that process, um, we have to uh, stay with a quintet excited state. And if we look here, we're looking at the right side of the diagram, even though I said we're supposed to be focusing on the left, just because these diagrams are oftentimes only labeled on the right side. You can see most of these labels are on the right side. There's different variations of this. You know, it's a challenge, I guess, for people making these diagrams to figure out how to pack all this information in. Um, and you can see this one's sort of nice. It's using these different dotted and dashed lines to help you keep track of things. Um, some diagrams you know, will just all be solid lines. But all we have here is a, quint, uh, a quintet E, OK? And so if we track this down, this line down, right? it's this dashed line, we have to make sure we we keep track of this. There it is. So that line turns into this solid line. So that's one state, okay? And so if we're on the high spin side of the diagram, the left side of the diagram, we're left at the spin crossover point. And so let's say we're a value of one here of our delta, we would have our energy of our transition would be about equal to 10B. So whatever B is, we can look up uh, for the transition metal ion, multiplied by 10. And that would be our prediction for the energy of that transition. But that's going to be our uh, our excited state is that E, quintet E, and then G for octahedral. And that's going to be a, a transition that will occur. For tetrahedral, same sort of thing, but remember we drop the, um, we drop the Gs. So this is just going from the quintet T2 to the quintet E. Now, huge mistake that people make on these diagrams with the spin crossover points is that they look at the labels here on the right and they say, oh, look, I have another quintet T2. And you might say, well, that's a different, that can't be, it has to, it has to be the same quintet two um, as the ground state, which that's true in this case, but you have to follow the lines. You could have some other quintet T, let's say up here, and it just happens to have the same term symbol, the same symmetry, and it is actually an excited state. So you have to follow the lines. And this one is on the low spin side, remember that's where the label is, but it came from the ground state on the high spin side, meaning that if we're talking about the high, spin, we have a high spin complex, we're on the left side of the diagram. This is not an excited state, okay? On low spin, uh, on the high spin side. On the low spin side, it is an excited state. It was a ground state and it became an excited state on the low spin side. But when we're counting number of transitions on the high spin side, 
No, it was the ground state. So don't make that mistake. You really got to follow the lines back um, and figure out where they came from. Okay. So in this case, we only had one atomic term spin bowl with a pentet. All these other ones aren't, aren't, aren't quintets. Um, and the quintet D uh, atomic term symbol split into the quintet E and the quintet T2. And the quintet T2 was a ground state with high spin. So with the high spin side of the diagram, we only have this one um, excited state that we listed here. So we would expect to have one spin allowed excited state, one main peak um, in our Tanabe Sugana diagram. All right, let's, um, let's switch over now and uh, do the uh, low spin side of the diagram. So let's talk about the low spin side of the diagram. So now everything we're gonna be talking about is gonna be low spin. Again, it's gonna be applicable to the D6 octahedral complexes. Um, this time we're talking about low spin or the D10 minus six, the D4 tetrahedral complexes. So if you have either of these complexes with this electron count and you're at low spin, you're gonna use the right side of the D6 to not be forgotten diagram. Why do we have a singlet A1? Well, let's go through that again with octahedral where we have our delta O, we have T2G and EG, and we have one, two, three, but now we're low spin, so that means this gap is relatively high, so we're not gonna be favored to put it in the EG. Instead, we're gonna put it in the TG, four, five, six. We have no unpaired electrons. That's two S plus one, S equals zero, and that um, indeed gives us a value of one, which means we call this a singlet. Okay, and similar thing for the TD symmetry. We have E and T2. We have one, two, three, um, four, five, uh, sorry, that's D4. So I was hesitating there, but we're only D4. I was going to six, we're D4, we're D4. This is why you need this 10 minus N rule comes from this flipping. And again, we have no unpaired electrons. So um, we're gonna get S equals zero and that gets spin multiplicity one, so same thing. All right, so now we look, so our ground state for octahedral is gonna be singlet A1G. And our ground state for tetrahedral is gonna be, for D4 tetrahedral, is gonna be singlet A1. Remember, drop the Gs, there's no inversion. Next, we look for singlet excited states. Um, and we have a few here. We have a singlet T1. So we can draw that out. And I did not go to the right line. It's where you really have to uh, pay attention to where you're going. There you go. So that transition is gonna be going from the ground state, singlet A1G to singlet T1G for octahedral and singlet A1 to singlet T1, dropping the Gs for tetrahedral. Let's look for our next singlet state. Remember, we have the preserved spin. There it is. We have a uh, singlet T2. And so our second excited state, it's gonna be higher in energy um, than the T1G excited state, is gonna be uh, going from the ground state to the excited state singlet T1G. And again, with the tetrahedral case, you drop the Gs. Looks like we have uh, one more here, but there's a last one up there we're gonna have to do. Um, and I see another one here actually, so there's a bunch. This one's gonna be singlet A1G going to singlet uh, E, G, right, we had an E, G, and singlet A1 going to singlet E. That's gonna be our third excited state. Gotta look carefully at these diagrams, they're compact. Here's another one, singlet A2. So I'll do this one in black. And I'm overlapping these all, right, with the same ligand set, because we're talking about presumably one molecule here, molecule here with the same ligand set. So um, 
the same energy for delta T or delta O, right? This is delta T. So I just arbitrarily chose a value of 3B, um, but you know, you might have to calculate these and use these as quantitative tools. I can go over that more in, in, in other videos, but right now we're just counting spin allowed states. So again, we go to the ground state and this is an A2G this time. Um, and we have the same thing dropping the Gs. And then lastly, way up here, there's actually um, a, a fifth one. And so that one's gonna be very high in energy. And it's also singlet A2G. So same symmetry for the excited state, but um, different energy. So you can have, you know, same symmetries in these diagrams, but they're distinct. These are two different states. They're both called singlet A2, but they are two different states with different energies, giving rise to different peaks. So we would expect to have one, two, three, four, five main peaks, five spin allowed transitions. If we have low spin D4 tetrahedral or low spin D6 octahedral complexes, five main peaks in our UV vis spectrum. Now, Will all five of these peaks show up in a typical experimental UV vis spectrum? No, you know, and particularly this fifth one is probably gonna be way too high in energy, way low wavelength, so too much in the ultraviolet region to see for typical experiments. Um, however, in theory, they're gonna be there, right? And, and what that value is, is we know what that value is. It's gonna be, if we have a ligand set worth 3B, it's gonna be around, what, 75B. But B varies depending on the transition metal, right? So probably you're not going to see that because 75B is pretty high. But anyway, in theory, you're going to see uh, five peaks here.